Good morning. Today we're here in uh, the outer edge of uh, Melbourne City on our job in this block here. This is usually a car park. We have some restrictions. All tickets required. I do a quick video. Okay, this morning we have a load bearing footing. It was dug yesterday. As you can see, uh, two and a half meter holes. Just two of us, nice and clean. How it should be done. This is going to take a three story house. Okay, here's a classic example of the offsets we're talking about. There's two pegs here. That one there. And this one here. I have actually seen people not read plans. Go to this peg here thinking it was the back of the house. But it's not. This peg there is actually for the upstairs balcony. That's one thing that should always be taken into account is measuring the pegs, checking the plans and seeing where you are. The current plan for this job here, the bottom section. Now as you can see, you have EB1s, RW1s, EB1s, RW1s, EB1s, RW1s. They're all retaining walls. Here you have a tree root barrier, sand pads, and every note in this plan is important. There's a member schedule of what's required, the steel, the description of the marks, EB1s, 2s, SB1s, Reinforced brick retaining wall, it's RWE, RW1s. Everything on this plan here is very, very important. Down to the legend. Founding depth notes. This here is the uh, ground floor layout plan. It shows all the piers in the centre, in here, tree root barrier, etc. These are all measured. Those are your bricks. Found in depth note. We're showing the retaining wall footing. So what you have here is a core field double skin wall. Posi struts will be hung off the internal skin. If you have a look at the steel schedule, you don't have trench mesh in the bottom as per normal. You have a sheet of steel, you just cantilever it back into the slab, crank bars, we'll make it a metre up, two layers of uh, mesh on the top, and that's basically how we build our retaining wall. Uh, just to recap, once again, always check your plans. That's the back line of the house there. And further down, that is actually upstairs. Like I said, I have seen people not read plans, go to that line, start excavating, then all of a sudden the whole job's wrong. What this is for is for piers that will have brickwork for the upstairs balcony. Okay, just one more quick thing on surveys and set outs and what to check for. Now plumbers and drainers obviously make a mess and it's part of the contributing factor of putting pipes in the ground. There's nothing they can do about it so obviously waiting for the truck to come back to load. But we had to reset this peg so what you would normally do, the set out pegs way up the top there, you measure the distance between them, you transfer it down to here and you 
square it all up running two string lines doing the three four five and usually we find that that's a pretty accurate method thank you so what you have here is this wall we've got to retain so we'll go 1200 into the job with the steel uh, we'll put a bottom layer of mesh on this then uh, crank bars will be uh, tied to the bottom layer and the top steel will go on top of that there'll be two layers of steel over this obviously got a bit of digging left to go but got to wait for the truck and that's what happens here this is a cantilevered retaining wall thanks to those trees there that's in because of those trees and what happens is put a layer of mesh on the bottom of that starter bars will be put in at 1200 and a meter up into this wall and we never miss these at all so set out robot will be brought we'll transfer pegs down to there to that back peg there to line up 150 mil in we'll go and that should give us a perfect line for our starter bars and that's how we do engineered cantilevered retaining wall